it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is, uh, it's not exactly going to be a review, but a kind of a review-esque thing, where I look at Gran Turismo Sport. I'm kind of late to the game here. It's been out for quite a while, and I think it's actually good being late because they've made lots of improvements that I'm aware of. When it first came out, the offline aspect of it was minimal from what I'm led to believe, and um, where I'm living now, the broadband is so rubbish that playing online is largely just not a factor, so I, I didn't bother to buy it. But there have been updates, lots of updates, that have improved the offline features. Um, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much depth looking at it, but basically the I think it's the sport bit is the, uh, yeah, that's the online stuff. Brand Central, that's where you buy your cars. I don't know why it keeps giving me that. It's, it's very familiar. If you're used to Gran Turismo, you will know how this works. You go to different areas of the map and there you find different manufacturers and you can buy their cars with credits that you earn in the game by racing and winning, if you're fortunate enough to do that. Um, but also, unlike previous Gran Turismo's, you can buy cars with real money using microtransactions. I do not do that. I find the idea... Uh, I don't know. I suppose I can see a purpose to it, but I would rather... I would rather win the money, win the credits. I don't want to spend money. Um, and then, of course, you've got your campaign mode, which is the it's the old school Gran Turismo before everything went online. And I don't know how big or how much of this there was when it originally came out, but now this is where we're at. You've got your uh, your four leagues. I don't know if there will be like another league added on when you've completed these four. That's how it used to work. Will that happen here? I don't know. And in each league, you've got multiple races. That's a new one. That was just added in a recent update. Um, and in each of these, I say, call these races, they're not, they're cups. You go into each of these and then you've got multiple races in each of these. Um, which all adds up to quite a lot of content. Um, you know, I've been reading, seeing whatever reviews and stuff that said, oh, it's all a bit minimalist. Well, I kind of don't think it is. Certainly not now, anyway. I don't know what it was like. But I had feared something like Gran Turismo on the PSP. I thought, it's all going to be online and all you're going to get offline is, is PSP-style Gran Turismo, which, honestly was a bit of a rip-off. It just was not enough to warrant a commercial release in my book. I think they, they just like didn't have time to properly develop it, so just fobbed people off with that minimalist excuse of a game. Um, no, this, this is pleasing. It's a decent amount of content. And what it feels like to me, what it reminds me of, is actually Gran Turismo 1. In the the amount of cups you've got with the number of races in each cup and the amount of cars you've got. I don't know what I'm doing there or where I'm intending to go. I'm going back in here because I started in I started a race here. Um didn't win that one. Where's that? Suzuka. Do I want to go back to that? Maybe not. We'll try this one next. Yeah, uh, it reminds me of Gran Turismo 1. In the structure of it, it's not ridiculously complex. Look at all my cars. I need to paint some of them. I like all of my cars to be red. Yeah, I've got the music turned off because copyright. So, uh, yeah, it reminds me of Gran Turismo 1 in the size and the scope. 
how many cars you get. I don't know about how many circuits you get. I think actually there, there are a good few more circuits than the original Gran Turismo 1, but you know, it feels like that kind of structure. The circuits, um, are these all real world circuits? I'm not sure. Uh, certainly a lot of them are. There are, I'm definitely missing the original Gran Turismo circuits because I mean Gran Turismo 1 they were all made up but they were gorgeous and I really liked them and I kind of miss them here um, I'm going to do worse than I normally would because I'm talking whoops you're not meant to do that but that's Gran Turismo for you if you tried doing that in project cars you would have trashed your car fallen off the track and that would be the end of your race but this forgiving while the physics the car physics are a lot more realistic than previous Gran Turismo's I think seems that way but it's still forgiving and I like that a lot the extra detail I mean it it, it is an improvement over Gran Turismo five and six on the PS3 but it's not a huge improvement because resolution is the same you just have more detail more fine detail and the shadows are a bit better but it's the way it feels that's improved I think the physics feel a good bit better Things I love that. <laughs> they drive worse than I do. Um, I can't remember if it's just arcade mode or if it's the whole game where you have a chosen difficulty level. I know I at some point I chose medium difficulty, or in, in terms of like the opponent car skill. Um, but th this lot drive like blithering idiots I mean I have been asked on occasion what games am I good at and it's fair to say that if I was playing online I would get booted off many of the servers for driving dirty because I it's a contact sport as far as I'm concerned <laughs> <laughs> I have no qualms about barging these cars. I, I won't necessarily ram them full force to get them out of the way. But if I'm alongside them and they decide they're going to move into me, I'm not getting out of their way. And I, I you know, I don't mind the odd little bump. Not a full head on shunt, maybe, but you know. But that would see me thrown off of quite a lot of servers. But, having said that, the original thing was, what games am I good at? I think I'm actually not terrible at this. Um, playing at this difficulty level, I usually win. I can usually keep the car on the track, quite often where the, where, where the computer control cars can't. Um, Interlagos, the Brazil circuit, I love that circuit. Um, and I raced that yesterday in this car, it's the Nissan GTR, and uh, the, the computer cars were just falling off left, right and centre. Oh, like I'm about to do, no, no, we made it. Yeah, um, where I was making it round quite adequately. I'm kind of used to that circuit from actually Jeff Crammon's Formula One Grand Prix. I learned that circuit and it really hasn't changed over the years. Um, so when it appeared on here, I was actually thrilled because I like that circuit. I don't know that they still race it in Grand Prix these days. I don't, I, I think they might have dropped it from the calendar, but that's a circuit that I love. And uh, when it cropped up, I was like, oh yes, we will have some of that. And I did all right. I won.
I haven't I haven't played the full length Nürburgring. I haven't played the Nordschleife yet. So I, I uh, whoops, not concentrating. I imagine it won't be greatly changed from the various versions of that I've played in the past, largely on other Gran Turismos. Oops. Yeah, I'm playing like a doofus now, because I'm talking. And I sh I'm also look oh, oh. I'm looking up at how many laps I've done and what position I'm in. Go away, you. There's... Just seeing that car, that skyline... The, one of the dentists where I go had... I don't think they've still got it. They had a skyline. I'm pretty sure it was a, it was a skyline, not a GTR. Well, it was a skyline GTR. I think it was an R34. And it was just like, holy crap, how much is this guy earning? <laughs> uh, I've met that dentist, I don't like him, but my god, he's got a nice car. I think it was actually the only skyline I'd ever seen in the real world. And I've seen it, or I used to see it, kind of trundling around workshop haven't seen it in recent years, past couple of years. It's weird actually, for a crappy town, every so often you do see some nice cars. There was someone where my mother-in-law used to live before she went into a care home. There was someone who had a Maserati, I think it was a Quattroport, Quattroporte, whatever, four-door in Italian. Um, And it was gorgeous. I'm not actually even sure that it was the four-door. It wasn't the Gran Turismo. But it was nice. I liked it. There's someone... Every... Friday and or Saturday night... They go charging round workshop in, I think it's a BMW M3, but they've got a, an aftermarket exhaust on it that sounds like a bloody trumpet. It's, it's all fairly fruity and, and nice sounding until they hit the high revs, and it hits those high revs all of a sudden, and then it sounds like a bloody trumpet. And it is so loud, it's ridiculous. And it's like, there isn't enough room for them to uh, get any speed up. Not that they should be doing more than 30 in the town centre anyway, because I'm near the town centre and it's like, they come round this corner and then there are traffic lights and then they get through them and then there are more traffic lights and they've got about 150 yards and you can just hear them come charging along this street and then hit the high revs and then they've got a break and it's like what are you doing and I can hear them from about 100 yards away because of this stupid trumpet exhaust it's just weird and silly and how do I know it's an M3? Because I get up at four o'clock in the morning at the weekends and they were still twatting about out there when I was walking to work and they went past me. Yeah, I didn't do great there really. But I'll take it, as long as I got a cup, you know, yeah. Not terrible. Points! What do points mean? Prizes. Maybe. What we are getting here, though, is enough credits to buy a um, Group 4 car, which is 
all I need to um, complete the uh, amateur league, you know, the first league thing, beginner thing, yeah. Because uh, I couldn't afford a Group 4 car, but then when you get up to this next level, you earn more money, so then I'll go back to that previous level and buy the Group 4 car and, and be able to finish all of that. We'll have a go at this, and then, uh... Will I call... Which... You see, I ought to be going and having a go at the, the other... Some other circuits in other cars, so you can see what it's like, but... I'm also... I'm playing the game, I'm trying to work my way through it, so, uh... Anyway, you get to see how long loading times are. That's a treat for you, isn't it? It's not terrible, to be honest. Normally you would have music playing at this point, background music, but I've turned all of the background music off because, you know, how it is on YouTube. Um, yeah, where are we? Oh, oh, we're at the Nord... Sh I'm glad I didn't change. I'm glad we're, we're at this because this is my first time on the Nordschleife on this, on Gran Turismo Sport. I've played it on four, five and six but not on here so expect me to crash we'll get to the bumpy bits oh and it's so narrow oh keep it on the track and get this geezer out of the way. Move. That's what I mean about I don't have too many qualms about bumping them. This, straight away, the light is much, much better than playing it on the PS3. The light is believable on these trees. They're not doing that silly flickering thing where the light sourcing is just wrong. This is much, much nicer. This is... <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I'm not going to say it's like being there because I've never been there, so I wouldn't know. But this, <clears throat> the light is good. It's believable. Oh, oh. yeah. I normally lose it going over that hump. Come on, out of my way. Ooh. No, come on, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Yeah, you go in the gravel trap. Ha. Ass, get off me. He's trying to shove his car up my exhaust. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm not into that. I do like this GTR. It is a nice... Oh, oops. I'm going to throw this off the... Oh, yeah. It is so forgiving, this car. It's got grip. It's got power. Oh, and it'll let you get away with shit, even if you get it wrong. It doesn't spin out. My God, what was it? I was, dri I was driving a Beetle yesterday. Oh, my God, does that thing just want to overtake itself. Which is kind of what you'd expect given that the engine is in the back though it is in a way though it does like the back wants to overtake the front all the time if you go around the corner it does let you catch it if you counter steer it, you don't always lose it you'll lose some speed but it's kind of fun um but for going fast well, you don't do that in a Beetle anyway. I never saw more than 75 mile an hour out of it, I don't think. And that was like downhill with the wind behind me. And Yeah. This car, though. Powerful and forgiving. I like it. Oh! You see, how did I get away with that? Come on, get out the way. Someone parked one of those. That Peugeot. They got one of them parked right outside my window yesterday. Black one. I don't know what it was doing on this street. They must have been a drug dealer. Um, oh, it's gorgeous, though. 
no one on this street has nice cars. It's... I'm in the rough end of town. Very. Whoops! Whoops! Oh my god. Yeah, it's actually, it's been quite, uh, quite an eye-opener moving, moving to this end of town because for the past 13 years I've lived in, um, in not the posh part, not that there's really a posh part of workshop, but you know, there are some very nice middle class, upper middle class houses in bits of workshop. You don't see these people in town. These are the people who go shopping at Meadow Hall. Um, but I've lived in a, you know, a respectable part of town. I'm now in the bit that is full of people who are at the bottom of the ladder. You live here because if you can't live here, you're homeless. And it's, it's rough. You get some dodgy people. <laughs> you get some really dodgy people. And, um... It's, it's kind of entertaining to just sit by the window and watch the people walking by um, and listen to them. It's, you don't need a TV to have entertainment. You're just looking out the window. is like watching, I don't know, um, well, I don't watch those kind of TV programs. Cop cops or something one of those kind of shows you know um, where they're arresting people for doing things they shouldn't be doing oh that's nice you can actually get this thing going if it looks like it's not going to slow down enough as you head into the corner, you can get it to just slide sideways and scrub off speed like that, which is great. What is that in front of me? Is that an... It's an Alfa Romeo, but it kind of... It looks like an Alfa Romeo that wants to be an Elise, but with more power, I guess. I'm in first place and I haven't crashed. Who'd have thunk it? I am thoroughly enjoying this. I've always liked this circuit, but I've also always found it difficult to find a car that it was... Oops! Oh crap. Finding a car that it's comfortable to go fast in here is tricky. It's like, yeah, slow cars are fun, but you're going slow. And then you'll have a fast car, but they will bounce on the bumps, and it's so easy to just lose it. And if you're racing against other fast cars, it's, it's difficult, but this thing, I mean, maybe it's just the opposition are uh, on too low a difficulty setting, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure that there is a difficulty setting on this mode, or if that's just arcade mode. Don't know, don't remember. Um, but I do like this car here. like driving the oh it's like driving down the back roads when I used to live in well before I lived in Milton Keynes I lived in a little village called Dean's Hanger and I would ride my motorbikes along around the back roads of Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire and there was this place I'd go from Dean's Hanger to Parsnam from Parsnam to oh, God, what's the place called? Well, there was like Thornton and Nash, but there was this place called Wadden. And that road reminds me of the road to Wadden. 
there was just a long stretch that was sort of uphill or downhill depending which way you were going it reminds me of that it's probably nothing like it and there definitely wasn't a castle in the background but that's where I think of and I remember tanking along there on my um, Yamaha RS125 two-stroke air-cooled wasn't very fast I was doing about 70 which down that road was quite brave and all of a sudden this big bike and it may have been an FJ1200 Yamaha, just came screaming past me. And I was like, that's bloody brilliant. And uh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Let's see, did we win any stuff? Was that the last race of this here, doofer? Yep, okay. The thing is, it doesn't tell you if you've got anything extra until you bang out of there and get out of there and then arrive here. And I didn't get anything extra. You get, you get like freebie cars and things if you achieve certain things, like if you go up to the next, I think it's like your experience level. Uh, I've still got a little bit that's not the experience is it it's the number of miles you have a set number of miles they want you to do per day and if you achieve that they give you freebies so uh, yeah I'm going to stop there I've waffled for quite a while um, Gran Turismo Sport ignoring the online stuff because I can't play it online it if you haven't, if you've been pondering like I was for a long time, should you get this or not because you're not going to play it online, yes you should. I don't know if that was true when it first came out, but as long as you can get online to do the updates, download the updates and it is it's good. It's got a lot of content there. The, the, there is one aspect of it that is really, really stupid and that is you have to you don't need to have the the playstation plus a, account thing going it's like you need that to uh to play the online games but to actually play this game in campaign mode you have to be online to play it in um arcade mode if you're not online you can only play it in arcade mode and you can only play these first three or four, maybe, circuits. And it won't let you play anything else. You have to progress through the game and unlock things. But it won't let you save anything if you're not online. And that's stupid. It's ridiculous. Um, it's inexcusable. I don't understand. I mean, it's like if your ISP goes down, you can't play Gran Turismo Sport. What the hell? Um, fortunately, internet service providers are better than they used to be. I mean, mine is absolutely crap in terms of speed and stuff, but reliability is... It goes down from time to time, but it doesn't stay down forever so long. But if you're with an ISP that goes down on a regular basis and is frequently like out for days at a time, you maybe don't want to get this. But if it's largely reliable, then yeah, um, I would say go for it. As a game, apart from that one really, really, really stupid aspect that is completely unnecessary, um, I think it's fantastic and I'm thoroughly enjoying it and well I'm going to turn the camera off now and play some more <laughs> while you're not watching so you can't see me crash okay thank you for watching Patreon? That's not even a word you made it up <laughs>